Hello guys, welcome back to Watch Time. Today's movie recap will be a sci-fi and thriller movie from 2023 called The Shift. Warning, there are spoilers ahead. The movie began with a scene in the middle of a lake where Kevin suddenly surfaced, gasping for air. He swam to shore, revealing that he was not from this reality. He walked down a road and activated a bracelet, preparing to jump to another world, driven by his desperation to find his wife. His journey began over 10 years ago when he lost his job at a bank. Distraught, he went to a bar to drown his sorrows. There, Molly approached him as part of a dare from her friends. What started as a joke quickly turned into a genuine connection, and they soon began dating, eventually marrying and having a child. Tragically, they lost their son, which heavily strained their marriage. Kevin was stuck in a job he despised, and Molly turned to alcohol. One day, after his boss expressed frustration with his attitude and hinted at firing him, Kevin left work early. He got stuck in traffic and called Molly, which led to another heated argument. Distracted, he didn't see another vehicle crash into his car, causing him to pass out. He later woke up in an alley with the same man who introduced himself as the benefactor. Kevin experienced a persistent ringing in his ears and nearly passed out, but the benefactor kept him awake with a sharp punch. The benefactor told Kevin he might soon need a job and hinted at an offer. When Kevin tried to leave, he noticed the streets were eerily empty. Considering calling Molly or the police, the benefactor informed him it would be futile and revealed that this was not the first time they had done something like this. Frustrated, Kevin confronted the benefactor, who explained that it was Kevin who had been moved to another reality. The benefactor then took Kevin to a restaurant where everyone, including the staff, seemed afraid of him. It was here Kevin realized the benefactor was Satan. As they ate, the benefactor explained that each choice we make spawns countless alternate realities and that he has the power to shift people between these realities. He claimed he had sent Molly a better husband in another reality and had moved Molly from this reality elsewhere after Kevin had given her a special necklace. Kevin demanded proof of these claims, prompting the benefactor to use his bracelet to send the waitress, Tina, to another dimension. The benefactor then offered Kevin a job as a shifter. He mentioned that other versions of Kevin had already accepted the deal and sold their souls for everything they wanted in life. He even promised to restore the perfect Molly to Kevin, but Kevin responded by praying, which amused and then angered the benefactor, who eventually disappeared. Lost and confused, Kevin apologized to Tina's family and ventured into the streets to learn more about this harsh reality ruled by a totalitarian regime with futuristic police patrols. As time passed, Kevin adopted to this new society, learning of its history marred by war and hate until the shifters appeared, removing problematic individuals. Eventually, the remaining leaders surrendered control to the benefactor, leaving the world without hope or faith, and religion became illegal. Five years later, Kevin worked under a fake name at a construction site and secretly distributed Bible passages through his only friend, Gabriel. He spent his free time helping others. Kevin also frequented a theater where he could watch Vika viewing, live feeds of alternate realities. The theater owner, Russo, had been searching for his lost cat for years. Kevin used a remote to search for Molly across realities, finding her one afternoon working as a nurse and raising her child alone, a sight that moved him deeply until the feed abruptly ended, forcing him to step back and respect the boundaries set by the reality viewing technology. Soon his time was up and he rushed to Russo to ask for more, but Russo's schedule was fully booked so he asked Kevin to return in a few days. On his way home, Kevin encountered a large protest at the bridge where police were preventing people from crossing to the south end which was scheduled for demolition. This would result in many losing their homes. Amid the chaos, a man leaped over the barrier and passed the police, disappearing in the middle of the bridge, revealing he was a shifter. The crowd started to panic and push against the police, who responded by throwing gas bombs and opening fire to disperse them. As everyone fled, Kevin was cornered by a police officer about to shoot him, but Gabriel pulled him to safety just in time. They hid in an old factory, where Gabriel told Kevin that God had abandoned them. Later, Kevin went to a grocery store and while waiting in line, he noticed a child wandering away from his mother. He followed the child but lost sight of him around the shelves. Fortunately, the child reappeared next to his mother, but Kevin couldn't help scolding the mother for her inattention. Everyone in the store stared at him as if he were crazy, so Kevin panicked and fled. As he ran, he was haunted by memories of the day he lost his son. They had only turned away for a moment to greet friends when their child vanished. They searched everywhere without success, and later, the police only found the child's backpack, leading them to conclude he was dead. After that, Molly and Kevin's relationship deteriorated, with constant fighting and Molly's increased drinking while Kevin sought solace in a support group. One day, Kevin tries to give Molly a hopeful necklace inscribed with, He lives, but she finds it distasteful, desiring that they grieve together and move on. This disagreement led to their separation. 
Presently, Kevin was retrieving some alcohol from a trash can when his neighbor Rajit spotted him and invited him over for dinner. During a pleasant evening, Rajit revealed he knew Kevin's real name because he had overheard Gabriel and was aware of Kevin sharing Bible verses. To show gratitude, Rajit had his daughters sing a song. He agreed to teach them and shared many Bible stories he remembered. Later, as they watched an emergency broadcast announcing the benefactor's return, the mayor instructed citizens to cooperate with the benefactor or face death. Kevin returned to the theater to watch different universes, looking for Molly, and finally saw one wearing the special necklace, indicating she was his Molly who had been shifted. Excited, Kevin rushed to get the universe's address code, but Russo couldn't provide it because the connection was lost when Kevin left his seat. Despite Kevin's insistence, Russo refused, explaining the futility of the special deviator bracelet. Desperate, Kevin found Gabriel and convinced him to provide a gun, despite the illegality and danger of confronting the devil. The next day, as Kevin tried to approach the benefactor at a restaurant, he navigated through crowds and police barriers, only to find himself teleporting into his motel room due to a trap door. Confused, he saw the restaurant's front again where the benefactor dined with another version of Kevin. The police shot at him, forcing him to retreat. Inside, Kevin was overwhelmed, destroying the room in frustration and praying. The benefactor appeared, taking the gun and making Gabriel clean up, reiterating his disdain for divine intervention and repeating his job offer. Kevin asked about his son, prompting the benefactor to dismiss him to learn about his inadequacies. Outside, the police shot Rajit as he tried to protect Kevin, who then retreated to his room. When Gabriel was killed by police fire, Kevin discovered he was a shifter by noticing a deviator on his wrist. Kevin used it to escape to a desert, then to an insane asylum where the local Tina was deemed insane. He tried to help her, but multiple Gabriels attacked, leading Kevin to escape to another universe. Here, he encountered a version of himself living in luxury, who attacked him. Kevin managed to return to his grim world, where he found Rajit still alive and his wife holding a drawing of hope. At that moment, a woman spots Kevin and alerts the police. Kevin runs as fast as he can to the theater, where he quickly grabs the remote to search for Molly. Miraculously, he finds his Molly on his first attempt, and Russo provides him with the address code just as the police storm into the theater. Kevin uses the deviator to escape just in time. In a different reality, Kevin finds Molly, but she wants nothing to do with him. Kevin tries to explain that he never gave up on them and that he has changed, but Molly has moved on and only keeps the necklace as a keepsake. Suddenly, Kevin is forcibly pulled away by the shoulder. It's the benefactor who has brought him back to the theater. Another Gabriel damages his deviator, and the benefactor then brings over Tina. He confesses that he did shift Kevin's son, which enrages Kevin. The police quickly restrain him, and the benefactor presents Kevin with a final choice. He must decide whether to return to Molly permanently or to send Tina back to her family. As Kevin hesitates, Russo is astonished to see his cat return, which Kevin takes as a sign of hope from God. Choosing to send Tina back to her family as she reunites with them, the benefactor tries to shoot Kevin with Gabriel's gun. At that moment, Kevin experiences a miracle that protects him from his selfless choice, transporting him to a reality where Molly is a single mother and a nurse. With his wounds healed and missing his ring, Kevin approaches Molly in a bar, initiating contact just as she had with him when they first met. They quickly connect and start dating, and Kevin begins a new life in this reality, saying it's not his world, but it is now his home. Eventually, Kevin marries Molly and becomes a father to her daughter, and they also have a child together. Kevin finds joy with his new family and believes that God has rewarded him with twice what he lost. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe. Take care, and see you next time.